Uh, hi, I'm Julian Sprung from Two Little Fishies, and I'm going to talk to you today about our Outsanding Selections uh, Live Sands, why you want to have sand in your aquarium in the first place, what biological functions, chemical functions it serves, and I'll distinguish the different types of sands that we offer. So, why do you want sand in your aquarium, or do you want sand in your aquarium? You know, there's a lot of people who set up their aquariums with a method that's called bare bottom, uh, which always makes me laugh because I think of a, you know, <laughs> bare bottom. Uh, but the uh, point of that is that some reef aquarium hobbyists like to be able to keep the bottom of their aquarium clean and they feel like if you've got sand on the bottom, it's going to collect detritus, dirt, and then it'll be a maintenance chore. Um, and to a small extent that's true. Uh, of course there are creatures, biological, um, you know, waste management creatures in your aquarium that you can use to maintain a sand bed. Um, and I, I'm really not talking here to offer an opinion of what's the best way to set up an aquarium. There are different schools of thought. Uh, when you have a bare bottom, then you can put corals on the bottom and they grow and cover it. If you don't, it looks like you're looking at an artificial, unnatural bottom. When you put sand on the bottom, it looks like you're recreating a piece of the ocean. It looks very natural, and then you provide a, a habitat for those creatures that, that live in a sand bottom. And many of the uh, reef invertebrates and some fishes that we keep in our aquariums are naturally found in a sand bed. So I, I don't think there's really a, a valid argument to say one way or the other. It really gets down to what you want to have in your aquarium. Um, so we like sand. <laughs> and I, I, when I, I wanted to offer different sands to the aquarium industry, I had to think of a brand and a name aside from our company, Two Little Fishies. And I, I thought, well, you know, we've got this wonderful sand and it occurred to me that you know, having a play on words, outstanding selections as opposed to outstanding. Of course, they are outstanding, but the the word outstanding, you know, gives this image of Julian Sprung going out in the world and with his little bucket gathering the sand just for you. <laughs> that was the idea I wanted to create. So uh, we started off with uh, two varieties, one being a very fine aragonite sand and the other being what we call refugite which is a mineral rich sand for use in refugium filters and it's also quite nice in a display aquarium if you, especially if you're growing macroalgae or seagrasses or mangroves. Um, so the, uh, the typical reef aquarium hobbyist likes a, a very white aragonite type sand. Uh, Outstanding Selections Live Aragonite. This is about a one millimeter sand that, that has a, a large amount of the foraminiferin skeleton that are pink, so it gives it, you have the contrast of the white and pink. Um, as you can see, this is wet, it's live sand. We pack it uh, with Biopronto, uh, which is our culture of uh, nitrifying microbes. And you'll notice that the packaging is done a little bit differently from your typical sand available for the aquarium market. We put it in a flat bottom pouch uh, with a handle and this way it stands up like that. Most of the sand marketed in the aquarium industry is put into a flat pouch that lays on the floor, ends up uh, you know at the foot of a uh, sales shelf or you know underneath aquariums with salt and dust accumulating on it. We wanted to be on the shelf with a, a 15 pound sack um, and standing upright so that you could really see it uh, and then to have the ability to carry it off uh, with you as opposed to you know hefting it that way. A little bit different conceptually. Um, the fine size sand is very popular for uh, denitrification in aquariums. Uh, there was a lot of uh, articles written about that idea of a deep sand bed using fine sand to uh, get rid of nitrate in the aquarium. Of course any size sand, if you have a deep, 
deep enough sand bed will promote that uh, process of denitrification. Uh, for the reef aquarium hobbyists who are keeping especially SPS corals and they're using high flow, a lot, real strong velocity, water motion, the fine sand is not ideal because the, what ends up happening is the currents blow the sand around. So we, pardon me, I'll put that down, have for that type of a setup basically the same material but in a larger size. The small fine size is about one millimeter average grain size and, and this is um, about three millimeter average size which gives it a, a very beautiful look. Uh, it's very natural. You can see in the photograph here of the yellow-headed jawfish um, what is essentially the same material uh, three millimeter sand that's commonly found around coral reefs. As I mentioned earlier, refugite is a mineral rich sand. As you can see this one's also packed with water and, and bacteria. Um, this was just packed so you have a little bit of the uh, sediment there makes the water look a little cloudy but um, when when this is put in the system that cloudiness would disappear within about an hour or two. The, the uh, function of refugite is to provide some of the minerals that plants utilize. It's basically a mineral rich sand that, that is produced by volcanic activity. You find it in a lot of tropical nations uh, where rivers run to the sea and in those areas you have a lot of unique biological uh, ecosystems. There, there are many of our beautiful corals come from those habitats. From Indonesia you see photographs of the corals on a black sand, sand bottom. Um, especially a lot of the LPS, the colorful LPS corals come from that area. Seagrasses live in this kind of a substrate, so do mangroves. Um, if you are setting up a refugium filter to employ reverse daylight photosynthesis so you can stabilize your pH and oxygen levels at night, uh, this is an ideal substrate to give Calerpa and other plant species a good footing and it supplies them with minerals that they need. Uh, the only other minerals that, that you would need to supplement, for example, would be iodine for the uh, red and brown seaweeds. Uh, but they get uh, their iron and manganese directly uh, from the substrate and growing in it. I hope that my explanations about uh, the benefits of sand and the different types of sand will inspire you to set up an aquarium with a sand bottom. Don't get me wrong, bare bottom's okay. We like bare bottom, but sand, it's natural, it's beautiful. It's what your wrasses like to sleep in. They live their whole life, or half their life at least, in a sand bed, uh, we've got starfish, sea cucumbers, shrimps, hermit crabs, all kinds of creatures live in sand, and corals and sea anemones. Sea anemones put their little foot, attach it to the rock in a sand bed. It's what they're used to. They don't like sitting on a glass bottom on starboard or something like that. Let your stony corals grow on starboard, it's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want to make a nice little ecosystem, you want to make a re refugium aquarium that's going to develop populations of copepods and worms and other creatures that uh, duplicate nature. Am I hammering this point home? I think so. Yeah, I like sand. Yeah. Try it. <laughs>